have anything to say? No? Yeah. <laughs> everybody to this evening's Trash Talk, a show about waste. We're here inviting guests on the show who want to talk about waste. I mean, there's a lot of it in society. We hear it all the time. We're like wasting things. There's garbage and plastic. So we've got a, a bunch of people here tonight that are going to tell us about what it's like here on the ground in 2019, October 18th, in our garbage theater <laughs> about waste. So we'll invite the first guest on the show, and we've got Jonathan. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Jonathan. It's Thank great you. to have you here tonight. You look wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> so I hear that you also encounter waste here on in society. Yeah. 2019. What do you have to say about waste? Um, I guess it really depends on like what way we're looking at waste. A variety of factors. I've worked in like fashion industry for like the past like eight years on and off, and just looking at like the amount of waste that consumers don't actually see themselves. So yes, when you go to the store and you're buying a T-shirt, for instance, you'll get it in a plastic bag. You'll get home. You'll regret the plastic bag that you got. Amen. But what you don't see is that on top of the plastic bag that that T-shirt got sold to you in. That t-shirt was packaged in a plastic package on its own inside of a package of 10 more packaged t-shirts that are again wrapped all together that are then in a bundle of 15 packages of those 10 packages of t-shirts inside of a big box that's all created together. So there's so many layers of plastic already in this consumer item that you don't even see. We're completely blinded to as consumers. Um, so sometimes it's it, or I guess so, it cements the fact that um, systemic changes with waste and plastic waste especially aren't at the consumer level, it's actually at the, at the level of big corporations. It honestly has nothing to do with us and it needs to be legislated as a society. Absolutely, absolutely, I can agree with you more. Um, I was also hearing about like, yeah, the rewrapping, right, of plastic. Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about it yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Would you like to? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, there's this really. Um, I'm not gonna name drop, but there's this company here in Vancouver. Um, they receive all of their, all of their product and all their merchandise inside of plastic bags, um, little silica packets. Um, but in order to be perceived as more eco-friendly, they unpackage the sweaters from these plastic packages and repackage them into paper packages to then ship out inside of cardboard mailers to their consumers so that their consumers only ever see paper packaging even though there are so many layers of plastic that have been thrown out what to produce. Extra I'm not going to do that, no, but yeah. No, no. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty gross. Yeah, it's, that's insane. It was <laughs> great having you on yeah, the show. Our so next guest is Mark. Mark is here. You have a topic about waste to share with us tonight. We can speak about waste for sure. Great. Uh, I would also have to agree with the industrial waste, uh, seeing like, especially one of the big contributors that goes behind the scenes here in Vancouver daily is the film industry. There's a lot of waste that goes into the film industry in building sets, putting productions together, food waste, um, essentially the like wardrobes. Like every step of the way there's waste and there's so much money involved in the film industry that it does get kind of turned a blind eye to and it's a subsidized industry here so it's kind of government subsidized waste that is being produced and no one really comments on it and even in the industry people don't care so it's just like I think it's something that the light should be shone on here if, if the BC government wants to be green and then wants to subsidize an industry that is producing a lot of waste it should that should be addressed We've spoken about it yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of it is probably needless. Like, we can move things around, maybe. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, and I think, I, I hope that that's becoming more of a thing. Like, obviously, custom costume design has always been a thing. If you want Renaissance costumes, there's people who can rent them and have warehouses full of them. 
but I think even to like the everyday things like not specialized furniture this this there's an opening in this Korean reuse industry for renting a lot of those things as opposed to buying new so and I think lots of people need to consider that like every purchase we make do you need to buy that new I don't know condoms maybe yeah. but other than that <laughs> um, so in the film industry so like what can you name a few examples of what kind of ways like that they just put it you know just rent <laughs> There's lots of like small items, like you have to consider every little detail in any shot has been decided upon and put there for a reason by someone. So like interior decorating stuff is one of the ones that I've seen, just like truckloads of interior decorating items, just they go to, I don't even know if they go to secondhand stores, like just coming and going. And there are these small things when they're like, whatever, that costs five bucks. But still, like, that somebody else could use that. That could have been probably gotten for free. Like, but I mean, for them, it's the time. It's okay to buy that new. It's quick. Let's go. Let's get this new girl. So, um, the other one is the, there's a huge amount of food waste, but that's because everybody gets fed. Uh, and I don't think that's going away in the industry, but I think they could deal with it better. So. I mean, there's also, like, I've heard things about developing, right? Like, building and the waste that comes with building. And this is something I'm interested in, is that everything has a byproduct. Like, if we're going to be producing something, there's also, like, that secondary thing that's the odds and ends, right? That we can't do anything with. We take material and we cut it apart and we make something out of it very specific. And that thing is sold, but then there's something else. So even those $5, uh, like, little you know, coffee cups that you need on set that are very specific to the movie that can never be really sold. And nobody wants that branded coffee cup ever again. But to make the coffee cup, like, there's a mold, there's like, the I'm not sure, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of work. Yeah. No one man can make a pencil. Yeah. So, yeah. No one man can make a pencil. So it's when you think about all the parts and components to an item as simple as a pencil and how much waste goes into that production line alone, it's when you start looking at a bigger scale, yeah. Every manufacturing process has a byproduct, and I think it's only now we're starting to think of it, which it's better now than never, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like all the guests are gone. I want. The crowd is so huge, like I don't even know who to pick. <laughs> Does anybody want to talk about waste? I don't know. Hands up. Anybody that want to talk about waste out there?